six two is addition and subtraction of fractions, but they're fractions of polynomials. You might have seen this coming. Um, but first off, let's just real quick. Let's just by analogy reason like what do we do when we are trying to add or subtract just two regular old fractions? And let's say we have this, and I wanted to use this guy right here. What do we have to do to add those two fractions together? We have to make the denominators the same. We have to make the denominators the same. Now there's a bunch of different ways we could do this. One way, and you've probably heard this a hundred times, we, it's cross multiply and divide. Have you heard that? If not, good, we don't need to worry about it, but like, I don't know how many people oh, wait. taught or tutored. Mm -hmm. Well, I know about cross multiplying. But. Yeah, right. So in other words, in order to get a common denominator, right, we could just say, well, a common denominator would be four times six, right? And we could turn the bottom into, and then what that works out to be is, so let's just go through this. We could say, well, in order to get a common denominator, I could multiply this guy by six and multiply this guy by four, and that will give me a common denominator. And you're absolutely right. And what we do is say, but again, right, the problem is we don't want to change these fractions. So what we do is something like this. We say, well, this guy needs a six down here. So I multiply by six on the bottom. What do I have to do to the top? Um, multiply by one. Wait, what? Well, I want this to equal one quarter, right? Like, I don't want to change this thing. I want it to equal one quarter. And so I have to have a six right here in order to keep it as equal to one quarter. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. You know, like, it, it's just like saying, like, like for instance, this is, this is it's good. Like, if we have one half plus a quarter, I could say, well, rewrite this as two quarters, right? I could say, well, if I multiply the top and the bottom by two, then I get two quarters plus one quarter equals three quarters like that. But the thing is, I want this fraction right here. I don't want to change it, right? I want to rewrite it with a new denominator. And do you believe that two fourths is the same thing as one half? Mm -hmm. Right? And that's how we do this kind of trick. So it's like, we could say, well, if I need a common denominator, the, the easiest way of doing it is to not use your brain and just say, well, I can make a common denominator by just multiplying that one by six and that one by four. But if I multiply this one by six, I can't, I don't want to change it the same way. I don't want to change one half. I want to rewrite it with a new denominator. So I have to multiply both the top and the bottom by the same number. In effect, what I'm doing is saying that one quarter is equal to one quarter times one. But I'm going to rewrite one in a way that helps me out. And as long as I rewrite one as something over itself, it could be a 77 over a 77 or a pi over pi or an X minus two over X minus two. As long as it's, as long as this, what's on the top is the same thing as what's on the bottom. And the thing that helps me out in this case is a six. Then, well, that's the same thing as one times six. What's four times six? Four. Yeah. Four times six is 24. So six twenty-fourths is exactly the same thing as one quarter, but now I've rewritten it in a way that's actually going to help me out because I need, just like you said, I need a common denominator in order to add these guys together. So that's what we do there. So what am I going to write here for this side? Um... Wouldn't you multiply it by four? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's 
again, one way we could get the common denominator. It's like, well, I have a four times six down here. I have a six times. Well, the only thing that's going to give me a common denominator is a four. If I put a four in the denominator, what do I got to put in the numerator? A four. Right. I'm going to ask this a hundred times just to really beat it into our heads here that, yeah, if, if you change the bottom, you got to change the top in the same way. Otherwise, you've made this something different than what you started with. And every step along the way, I want these things to be equal. Okay. So now, okay, now it is, this is equal to that. And let's just go ahead and do all of the multiplications here. I'm going to say one times six is six. Four times six is what? 24. One, four. One times four is what? Four. And then we are left with 24. We have a common denominator. So I'm going to put them over that same denominator like this. And this is not a strictly necessary step, right? Like I could, I could have just said, well, like 6 24ths plus 4 24ths is a total of 10 24ths. But we're taking this step right here and we can say, okay, 6 plus 4 is 10. Now, let's see, I want to reduce this now. And here's, and this is the problem with, well, it's not necessarily a problem. It's really not a problem. We're going to end up doing the same amount of work, whether I do it this way or another way. But right now, I can see that I have some common factors that could cancel out. 10 equals what? 10 equals what times what? Two times five. Two times five. And 24 is two times what? 12. 2 times 12. And so I could cancel out these twos, and I'm left with 5. 5 over 12. 5 over 12. There we go. And so, OK, now let's just go back and check our work here. I started off with two fractions, and I said that fraction plus that fraction is equal to that fraction plus that fraction. And I could see that because I did not change the fraction. 6 over 6 is the same thing as 1. So I just multiplied this fraction by one. I just wrote one in a way that's actually going to help me out. And then I just rewrote it that way. Six twenty-fourths is exactly the same thing as one fourth. I haven't changed anything. Same thing over here with the six. I wrote one sixth as four twenty-fourths. That helped me to write it as 10 24ths to actually when I sum them together, I got 10 24ths, which I reduced down to five twelfths. I'm going to leave this right here and get rid of this work. You got all this? You ready? Yeah. Okay. So now another thing I could have done, another thing I could have done is said, well, what I could do, and if you anticipate what we're doing today, we're doing this kind of thing, but with polynomials. Mm -hmm. And what have we been doing with polynomials up until this point? We've been factoring them. Right. So let's see what happens if in, instead of just jumping to the point and finding the biggest number I can with a common denominator, let's first just factor these guys. One is already factored. One is already factored. Four equals what? Two squared. Yeah. Two times two. two. It's gonna, it's gonna help to write them out, especially like with polynomials. Well, actually, yeah, you could write it as two squared, it's fine. But I like, personally, I like to see it all laid out. And so I wanna see the two and the two. Six is what? Uh, two times three. Two times three. Now, pay attention to the way that I reason this out because what the way I'm gonna reason this out is what I'm, I think is the easiest way to go about doing it with polynomials. First off, I ask myself, is that thing here the same thing as this thing here? And I could see, no, it's not. And what I notice, there's one factor that's over here that is not over here. What is that? Uh... This guy's missing something. Like they both have a two in common, 
but this one is missing what? How about that three? Oh. That's what, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I, I want to make this the same number. Right. And I could see like, well, he's got a three. He doesn't have a three. He has to have a three in him in order to, to, to work out. So I'm going to say, if he needs a three here, I could go ahead and write it here. But what do I have to do if I just, is the same principle as before. If I write something in the denominator, what do I got to do to the numerator? Multiply it by the same thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Otherwise, I have changed the fraction. And I'm not trying to change the fraction. I want the same exact fraction right here. And I can see that, yeah, if I were to multiply this out, I would have 3 over, what's that, 12? 4 times 3 is 12. I would have 3 twelfths, which is the exact same thing as 1 fourth, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm looking over here and I'm saying, well, he's deficient something. This is, it's almost the same, but what am I missing from this one that we have over there? A two. An extra two, right? And so I'm gonna say, okay, I need a two there, which means I also need a two up here, okay? Now I'm just looking at it and I'm seeing, yeah, okay. A two twos and a three. I have two twos and a three. I, I have the exact same thing. And at this point, I can put them over a common denominator. That is two times two times three. Just like that. One times three is three, plus one times two is two. And I'm left with five, plus, I mean, sorry, three plus two is five over the bottom, two times two times three is indeed 12. And, oh, I don't have to, see, I took that extra step to factor this guy first, but the payoff was that in the end, I didn't end up with a 10 twelfths, or no, 10 24ths, where I had to factor out a two and cancel it and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, my point for doing this is to show you that you could, if you want with this homework or with, for the rest of your life, you could do this any way you want. I mean, you could do this either, either of these ways. You could factor stuff out and just get the bare minimum, which is kind of what we did, right? I did the bare minimum in order to get a common denominator. In the other case, I just went overkill. I was like, just multiply those jokers together. And then, yeah, and we went a bit over. Instead of finding a common denominator of 12, we found a common denominator of 24. That works. And if you want to do that, that's fine too. It's just this way is going to be, I think, a little bit more straightforward when you're working with polynomials. So this is the principle we're going to be working with today. And um, this is all well and good, but it, it's a little bit, it looks, of course, it looks different when we add polynomials into the mix. So let's go ahead and do that with a couple. Are you ready to roll? Yes. Okay. So first thing I want to do is, well, yeah, I, we'll hold off on that. I want to do a really ugly example. This is number 18 from page 253. Page 253, number 18. And we are to add these two fractions together. 3y plus 2 over some ugly stuff. And it is 2y squared minus y. 2y squared minus y minus 10. Okay. Now, uh, the other one is 8 over 2y squared minus 7y plus five. Let me know when you have that. Okay. Okay. So again, this is the same principle. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, man, if I just had a common denominator, I could just add everybody together and we'd be good to go. 
but these are polynomials. And so it's kind of like the same thing. I'm thinking, well, if I factor these out, it might make my life easier. So for, for this, I'm going to recommend that the first thing we do with anything like this is factor everything out. I could see that the numerators are, you can't factor anything out of those numerators, but those denominators can certainly be factored down. So I'm going to copy down this first guy again, like this. And I'm going to go ahead and write it like this. Leave my because at this point we've done about 100 of these, 100 if not 150. And we know that a quadratic breaks down like this if it breaks down at all. Ditto for this guy, and so we're gonna do that. So with this guy, what has to go first? I think there's only one possibility with what could be here and here. Um. Two y and one y. Two y and one y. It's the only way to get it, right? Um, because I mean, yeah. <laughs> Unless you have a square root of two y and square root of two y, which we're not doing. We are not doing that kind of that kind of junk. So, okay. Now, what about the last? We have a couple possibilities, right? What what multiplies together to give me ten? Um. Two and five. A two and a five or? A one and a 10. One and a 10. Which one do you want to try first? Two and a five. Let's try the two and the five. Uh, I'm just going to put a two here and a five here and let's see what happens. First, okay, outer gives me 10, inner gives me two. 10 and two, no way to get a minus one. So let's flip them around. I'm gonna put the five here and the two here. Okay, what does the outer give me? Uh, four y. What does the inner give me? Five y. And how do I combine those to give me a negative one y? You subtract five y. Mm -hmm. And so the four's gotta get the plus. Uh, and so we have five and a two. And who gets the minus? Uh, the five? Yes, yes, the five has to get the minus because this negative five term came from this multiplication right here. Uh -huh. And then I'm just going to check if that one plus, then we have the plus will come from positive two plus, I mean, times two y gives me the positive four y. And now that I've written it out, I'm just gonna check it and say, okay, first gives me two y squared, yes. Outer is plus four y, inner is minus five y for a total of minus one y, good. Negative five times positive two gives me a negative 10. And so yes, that means exactly the same thing as that. We're good to go. We haven't changed anything yet. Okay, here's this guy. Now, what has to go first? 2y. Uh-huh. And 1y. The 1y has to be, because now when I multiply those together, I get that. Now, oh, this is easy. There's only one possibility for five. Five equals what times what? Five and one. Five and one. And so let's see, which one do you want to try first? A five and a one or a one and a five? Um, uh, well, five and a one. Five and one. Okay, so when I do the outer, I get what? Two y. When I do the inner, I get what? Five y. Can I combine those to give me a negative seven? Minus two minus five. There we go. And so that does indeed give me a minus seven y. So I feel good about this. I'm going to put my five here and my one here. What signs do I have to have? Um, don't they both get a negative? Yep, exactly. Minus and a minus. Okay. Now let's see. I'm going to double check it. 
first gives me 2y squared. Good. Outer is minus 2. Inner is minus 5. Minus 2 and minus 5 is minus 7. Good to go. Negative 5 and a negative 1 gives me a positive 5, and so I'm good to go. Now, in the same way that I did earlier, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this and give myself a little bit more room here. We just said this was a 2y and a y, and we had, I believe, a 5 and a 1, and they were both minuses. I believe that's what you just wrote down. And so now here's the thing. Just like before, I had a bunch of terms in the denominator, right? We had like a 2 and a 2, and then we had a 2 and a 3. And I asked, okay, in this one, what am I deficient on? We, we have a 2. We're good with 2s. And then we just needed a three because the three showed up over here, but did not show up over here. It's the same kind of thing I'm going to do over here. I'm going to say, well, we have a two y minus five in both of them, so we don't need to worry about him. And now I'm looking over here and I'm seeing, oh, hey, look at that. Y minus one shows up over here, but it does not show up over there. So I'm going to need one of those in the denominator. Right? Uh -huh. So I'm going to say, okay, this guy is deficient a y minus one. So I need to have a y minus one down here, a y minus one. But that means I need to do what to the top? Also, you have to multiply it by y, y minus one. Y minus one. Now be careful. Yeah. Parentheses are your best friend. It's really, really good to remember that that is one thing. We have to have parentheses around the 3y plus 2 when we do this. And so now I'm going to say, okay, y minus 1. And now that I've changed some stuff around, right, I've written something different, I'm just going to double check that this still works, right? And I can see that the y minus 1 over the y minus 1 cancel, okay? I, so I have not changed that fraction. That thing that I have right there is the same thing as that right there. Good to go. Okay, so that guy is good. What term am I missing over here? Uh, 3y plus 2. Right? We're no? trying to get Wait, a what? what? Uh, y plus 2. Sorry. Y plus 2. Yeah, yeah. And yes, we are missing a 3y plus 2, but that's a numerator, right? Right at this point, yeah. we're only trying to get the same denominator. And so you're right. We are missing a y plus 2 over here. So I need a y plus 2 right here, which means I have to do what to the top? Also multiply it by y plus 2. Multiply it by y plus 2. Now I have a common denominator. And what I'm going to do is just, it's already factored. And the hope is that as you're doing each one of these problems, the hope is that when you combine this stuff, you're going to have new factors on the top. And maybe they'll go ahead and cancel with some stuff on the bottom. And so what I'm saying is don't, don't try to multiply this out. This is already factored. It's nice. We want to have it factored. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rewrite this in its factored form, which is 2y minus 5. And I could do it in any order I want. I might as well just take the first one and go y plus 2 minus one, which is the same thing as this. I've just rewritten the order. It's the same thing. But now, okay, that thing is on top. We have 3y plus 2 times y minus 1. Now, plus 8 times y plus 2. It's not going to write an 8 in that. It's like an 8. There we go. And so right now, I can't cancel anything out, right? I mean, then you, we've seen stuff like this in our previous homework, right? It's like when we have something like this, the hope is maybe I could cancel some stuff on the top and the bottom. But right now, everything is separated by addition. So maybe, hopefully, if I multiply everybody out, some stuff will cancel and I'll be able to rearrange and blah, 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 blah. So let's do that. Let's multiply this guy out, and what do we get? 
So you get three y squared. Yep. Um, plus minus three y. Mm -hmm. Or do you? Because you can do it both ways, right? Yeah. So well, we do get yeah a minus three y, and then we get a plus two y. Right. Middle, right. And those combine to give me a minus y. Wait. Oh, well, can't you also just multiply whatever is in the first parentheses times the first number in the other parentheses and then do it again for the second number? Or do you usually just like? I all the foil. I all oh. foil these. Okay. I mean, if you want, you can. Like how did, we should end up with the same answer in the end. Um, I prefer to foil. Okay. Uh, uh, so that's what I did right there. I said the outer gives me minus three, the inner gives me plus two, minus three plus two is minus one. Wait, outer. Right. First outer, so minus. Now I'm lost. What are we doing? Well, I just multiplied this out right here to give me this right here. First outer inner last gave me that right there. 3y squared plus 2y mm -hmm. minus 3y mm -hmm. minus 2. Mm -hmm. and then you get 3y squared um, minus y minus mm -hmm. 2. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Cool. So we got that guy there. And now what about that eight times y plus two? I multiply that guy out. What do I get? Um, eight y plus 16. Eight y plus 16. Okay. Now I'm gonna come, I'm gonna go from here back up to the top. I'm gonna erase, or can, am I good to erase all this stuff right here? Yes. Okay, so I'm erasing this stuff. And I'm going to just copy this exactly. We get 3y squared minus y minus 2 plus 8y plus 16 all over my common denominator, three things, which was 2y minus 5, y plus 2, y minus 1. Okay. Now, okay. Hopefully, and again, the, the hope is that I'll be able to recombine this and then factor it out and maybe we'll get one of these factors out. So, I'm just gonna copy down the denominator again. Y plus two, Y minus one. Okay, uh, the three Y squared, is there, are there any other Y squareds up there? No. You know, so it's got to just stay a three y squared. Now, what about the y terms? Combine all the y terms, and what do we get? Seven mm, y plus seven y plus seven y. Now, what about the constant terms? Uh, you get. So um, minus two plus 16, which is 14. Plus 14, okay. Now hopefully we could factor this guy out. And the nice thing, now here's just one thing we could do. This is what I, this is how I like to think about it is, okay. I have some terms in the denominator. Maybe one of those terms is gonna show up in the numerator and I mean, that's the hope, right? Because if, if this doesn't break down to at least one of these guys, then we're done, right? And we could just, we'd, we'd be done with, put your box around this and you're done with the problem. So 
The question is, can this break up? And again, I see that this is a quadratic and I know what quadratics, how quadratics factor, they factor into two terms like that. If this breaks down, what does my first have to be? 3y. Y. 3y and? Y. And y. There's no way around it. So now that I'm looking at this, it's like, well, hopefully one of this guy, because there's no 3y down here. There's a 2y and a 1y and a 1y. Hopefully this guy is either plus 2 or minus 1. That would be cool. So just kind of keeping that in the back of my head, 14 equals what? Um, two times seven or one times 14. And seven or one times 14. And so I'm gonna try just to start off with is like, well, if that's a seven, that ain't gonna help me out at all. If that's a 14, that's not gonna help me out. I like to start with my smaller numbers first, and I'm just gonna say, well, maybe if that's a two, let's try that one. So this would be a two and a seven. And let's see what might happen. Plug that in. What would my outer be? Three y squared. Oh, wait, sorry. No, no, no. Uh, six y. Six y. And my inner would be? Seven y. Seven y. And I could see, no, there's no, no way. That's not going to combine to give me a seven y. Crap. Uh, OK, a two and a seven. Well, hmm, maybe try this. How about a one and a 14? Because I'm thinking maybe that minus one will work. So how about a one and a 14? <sighs> My outer would be three Y. Okay. My inner would be 14 Y. No. And, and nope, that's not gonna help. Okay. So, okay, we tried the two and the seven. And at this point we're done because I could see that's not going to do it, but we might as well just for the sake of doing it, just factor this guy out. Um, so, because, well, we're gonna see something in just a second. So um, that was my hope and I am kind of let down, but whatever, I'm gonna continue factoring and say, uh, Okay, we tried, how about, we tried a two and a seven. Let's try a seven and a two. Uh, and I don't think that's gonna work. Six so two. Uh, Wait, but you, you already oh, did, that. did that. We did that one. I mean, I mean okay, yeah, yeah, a two and a seven. A two and a seven. Um, oh, yikes. Huh. Gonna do 21 and two. 21 and two is not gonna do it. So mm -hmm. how about a one and a 14? Really? No. 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 Looks like that guy does not factor. Are we right there? Is that, is that true? One and a 14. So we have a 14 and a one. That didn't do it. A one and a 14. Outer is that. Inner is that. That's not going to help. A two and a seven. Two and a seven. Hey, no, because we have a 21 and a two. So how about a seven and a two? We have a four and a seven, I mean, I'm sorry, a six and a seven, we've done that. Nope, okay, looks like the top does not factor. This will happen. That's why I chose this one. Because sometimes it doesn't factor out. And then that's where you're done, right there. But you have to check, right? We always, we wanna check that out and try to factor it out. If it doesn't factor out, whatever, we're done. However, something interesting that might happen, you might end up with something like this. And oh, I don't know, how about a y uh, minus three. Now, if this happens, Now look, this, this, what I'm writing down right now has no relation to what we just did. That question, number 18, that is the answer because it is completely factored. We got a common denominator. We added everything together. There's nothing more we can do. But I want to talk about something like this. Let's say we had factored everything out and we got something like this. You might think that you're done. You might say, well, 
this y minus three doesn't cancel any one of those. This four y minus 10 doesn't cancel any one of those. Or does it? Is there something I could factor out of that four y minus 10? Yeah, a two. I, I could factor out a two. And what does that leave me? Two y minus five. With a two on the other side. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I pull the two out, and you said I would be left with a 2y minus 5, and then I'd have a y minus 3, and then, oh, look at that, 2y minus 5, y plus 2, y minus 1, just like that, and then you'd say, oh, yeah, hey, look at that, it's in disguise, it's not exactly the same factor as that, but I could pull one of these guys out, cancel those out, and then that would be my final answer for two times that, and then that and that. Uh, yeah, so just be careful with that. This is, this is what you're gonna be doing for homework, this type, of, this type of fun stuff. But I recommend that you factor everything out first, then get a common denominator in the way that we said. Like, if you read this section in the book, they say, like step one is find the least common multiple. I don't like to think about it like that. I like to just look at the denominators and say, well, what is this? Do they have the same thing? No. Well, this one's deficient in what? Well, it needs a y plus two. Okay, well, multiply by y plus two. What's what's missing on the other one? Well, the other one was missing a y plus one. Okay, well, put you know, multiply the top and the bottom like that. Okay, so that is the bulk of what you're going to be doing for this one. Um, however, there's one. <laughs> We're gonna talk about something like this. Let's, let's look at this. Can I factor anything out of that? No. There's something I could factor out and it's a what? negative one. Oh. Yeah, and I know I'm, I'm being deliberately tricky, right? If I looked at that, I'd say, no, that's factored completely. A and B are not the same thing. You can't factor anything out. But that, and that's my point. You could always factor out a negative one. Mm -hmm. And let's see what that looks like when we do it. I just pulled out a negative one. What, then what does A become? Uh, a? What? <laughs> yeah, here, I'm just going to go ahead and cut to the chase. It becomes negative A. Huh? Why? Well, oh, because yeah. uh... uh -huh. I know. And this is this is tricky. This is really tricky. This is why I'm going over this. So then what about that B? What does the B become after I factor out a negative? Positive. Positive B. OK. Very, very tricky. Now, what I could do is I could rewrite this as something minus something else. I'll have my negative one out front. And basically, I'm saying I could just switch the order because it's just addition and subtraction, right? And so I could rewrite this as B minus A. So, and this. This has to be true, right? Negative of a negative is a positive, right? You take the negative of that. That's that. So <laughs> how are we going to apply that? Okay. So what I'm so what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with stuff like this in your homework. You're gonna have like one over a minus b plus say two over. B minus A. And you're going to say, oh man, how do I get a common denominator? Well, we could take either one of these that you want. Let's just take this one. And the way that we apply this is we just say, well, don't think about it as factoring out a negative one. Instead, just think about, well, because of this, I could just flip it and then make it negative. 
In other words, if that's a B minus A, I can make it an A minus B and then just bring a negative along for the ride. Of course, we don't write negative one in there, right? Like we usually just, instead of writing negative one, we just write negative in front of something, right? So in other words, I'm just saying that's negative whatever number this is right there. If you want, you can write it as a negative one. Then from here, A minus B minus two over A minus B like that. Now we have a common denominator. We're not going to get to the next section today. We still got we still got some stuff to do. So let's not, we're not going to worry about the next section. We'll just go into this. So this, this is going to come into play. I will we'll do a couple examples like this. But is does this make any sense? You want to see this again, maybe in a different context? That makes sense. It does, right? And let's just, let's check it. Like, so what I've said here is that anytime you have some number minus another number, it's the same thing as negative and then you flip them. Let's just make sure that that's right. I'm gonna take this negative and distribute him into each one of these because we have parentheses, right? And you're multiplying by something. That gives me a negative B negative times a negative is a positive like that and we could see oh yeah you just write it in this order and so i haven't changed anything there i've just written it in a way that helps me out yeah i'm sorry buddy you got you gotta wait for a minute in the same way as i said earlier if i have one half i could rewrite that as one times two over two times two i've rewritten it in a way that help me out, but I haven't actually changed anything. Two quarters is still one half. A minus B is the same thing as negative B minus A. And we can see how, why would you want to do that? Well, in this case, it gives you a common denominator. You did not have a common denominator here, but by writing it in this funky way, you haven't changed it at all. It still means the exact same thing. But now we have a common denominator and we've written it in a way that helps me out. The same way as when I do. Boy, he is loud. The same way as when I write one half as two quarters, it helps me out. Yes, ma'am, you can have a hand. Okay, thank you. Okay, so how is this going to work in your homework? Can I erase this stuff? Yes. Okay. So on page 253. Number, number, oh, where was it? Ah. Yeah, number 10. They give us R squared over R minus S. And then they say plus S squared over S minus R. First question, do we have a common denominator? <laughs> it depends on how you look at it, right? Not as written. As written, R minus S is not the same thing as S minus R. Right. And so we're going to use this nifty little fact. We could think about it as factoring out a negative, which means the exact same thing as you flip it and then make that quantity negative. And so I could choose either one of these that I want. How about I'll, I'll flip this second one. Okay. So I'm going to copy the first one down exactly. Minus S. Now plus S squared over, what should I write in the bottom? Um, negative. Negative. Parenthesis. S 
um, R minus S. Yes. Okay, and that's the trick, right? Now, please, please heed my advice here. And it's the same thing I've been saying all along. Every time you take a step and you go from here to here, just double check your work. I want to think, okay, I factored out a number. If I were to put him back in, would I end up with the same thing? And so the negative comes in and gives me a negative R. Yep. The negative comes in and gives me a positive S. Yep. Okay. I'm good to go. Now, technically, it's not a common denominator because one's positive and one's negative. And in practice, what you're going to do is say, well, instead of factoring this out as a negative, I could just make this entire thing negative. And since it's plus, I could just make it a minus instead. And if it were a minus in between there, I would write it as a plus. But so in other words, flip the sign of whatever that guy was. And after you've done a few of these, I'm going to suggest that you take this intermediate step right here. But after you've done about 10 of these, then you, sh you should feel comfortable to just jump straight from here all the way down to here and say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If I make, if I flip that, that makes this entire number negative. And so I could just think about it as pulling out the negative one all the way to the front, but just like that. Do we have a common denominator? Yes. What is it? R minus S. Okay. And now what is in the top? Um, R, S, R squared plus S squared. Plus? Minus. Thank you, right? That was... Yeah. Okay, so R squared minus S squared. Can we factor that? Yes. Uh -huh. And how does it factor? Uh, R plus S times R minus S. Excellent. R plus R minus. I'm going to double check that because I always do. I'm going to stop and go, wait a second. First, give me R squared. Outer minus RS. Inner plus RS. They cancel out. Last gives me negative S squared. Yes, that's what I have. Okay. So, can we cancel anything out from the top and the bottom? Yes. The yeah. RS minus S. The R minus S. Do have the fewest classes? Cancel. And I'm left. Tuesday. Monday? Put that guy Tuesday. in the numerator. Uh, okay, so you, this weekend only, not during the week. Oh, I got you. Okay, let's do Friday then. At what time? Um, oh, sorry. It's all right. Uh, R plus S. Yes. R plus S. That's all that's left. So that's how we're going to, that, you know, I started off, I said, can we factor something out or something? Da, 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 da. What I'm getting at is we want to be able to think about this, anything minus anything else is exactly the same thing as negative, flip it around. And in practice, this is how you're going to do it. You're going to say, well, hold up. Those are almost the same. If I just flipped those, they would be the same. Oh, if I flip that, I got to make that quantity negative. And yes, that changes the numerator and stuff like that. We could have also written it like that. Um, okay. Now I know that just a minute ago I said the very first thing you want to do is back <laughs> down. Well, okay. There's always an exception to the rule. And in this case, I notice, like I just right off the bat notice that nifty little trick that we just talked about. We could apply it here, right? We could say, well, hmm, look at that. This is almost the exact same thing as this. It's just that this is in the wrong order. 
And so what happens if I, you tell me what to do. What do I need to do to this guy to make him look like that guy? Um, okay, well, you can keep the denominators the same. And then you can have the first denominator stay the same. Mm -hmm. um, and then you do the, the, the take out the negative. Uh -huh. And what do I you write get mm -hmm. a negative y squared plus 16. Wait a second. I wrote this wrong. Just a second. Okay. All right. Uh, wait. One second. Yeah, you get y minus y squared minus sixteen. Uh huh. And you have the negative sign outside of the parentheses, but you can just make that into a plus, right? There you go. Yeah, exactly. We could say, well, hold it. If I pull out the negative, that's the same thing as bringing him up here and making this a plus. There we go. All right. Do we have a common denominator now? Yes. Yeah. Right. And what is it? Uh, y squared minus 16. There we go. Okay. Uh, now what happens to the top? You tell me. What do I, what do, I do here? Um, you add them. Just add them. Yep. I'm trying to be. I'm, I'm trying to be like tricky. Like, and and that's yeah. That's all you do. You just add them. And so we have that thing, and then plus that thing, which is this. Okay. And then, okay, now what? What does that do? What does that give me on the top? Uh, well, you have your y minus y, which is no y. No y. And then uh, negative 9 plus 7, which is negative 2. There you go. And then does that denominator factor out? y squared minus 16, yes. Huh? What is it? You have your y, mm -hmm. y, mm -hmm. and four, mm -hmm. and four. Yep. And you have plus four and minus four. There you go. I'm gonna double check first. Yes. Outer, inner, cancel. Good. Negative and a positive is negative. Four times four is 16. So we have y squared minus 16. We're good. That guy did come out to there. And hmm, nothing canceled on the top. I was kind of hoping that when all of this was said and done, we might have like a y minus four or something like that. But it didn't work out that way. Okay, big deal. So I want to change this up a little bit, just a little bit, and see what happens. So yes, we are done right here. That is the answer to number 14, where we are done. Um, yeah, because nothing cancels out here. I can't factor out a two. That guy's completely factored, we're done. Now let's say that the, the first, in the beginning, instead of this minus this, it were plus this. Now let's just kind of work through this and see what would happen here. We, just like you said, that would have stayed the same. Now what happens here? We're trying to get um, a denominator, and so? Well, you would do a negative, take the negative out, and then you have negative y squared minus 16, but then you could just make it a neg minus. There, and then the denominators, I mean, sorry, the numerator did not change. Okay, now do we have a common denominator? Mm -hmm. And it is y squared minus 16. Now tell me what to do with the numerator. 
you subtract them. Mm -hmm. So well, this guy is the same, y minus nine. Why don't you tell me what to write? I'm not gonna finish that up. Mm, minus seven plus y. Plus y, yes. That's probably how I would write it, just like that. Mm -hmm. What we're doing there is we're saying that this is all over the common denominator, and then you have a y minus nine minus whatever's on the top. And I'm kind of, and so I'm kind of thinking about this as everything in there is in some kind of parentheses. And so that's minus the quantity seven minus y, which gives me a minus seven and a plus y. In other words, I'm distributing this negative in. I'm not gonna make too big of a deal of that because you caught it, right? But it's easy to lose sight of that and you just write minus seven minus y because you don't distribute into everything. But it's gonna be crucial that you do that. Um, now, interestingly, let's just see what this gives me. What do we have? Um, 2y minus 16. Minus 16, okay. And the denominator worked out to be what? Y squared minus six. Oh, sorry. Y yeah. <laughs> uh, on both sides. Uh -huh. And plus four minus four. Plus four minus four. I get all cancel something out. But in this case, <laughs> what do you want to do to the top? I mean, you can take a two out and mm -hmm. you have a two on that side and a y minus eight. Y minus eight, which almost cancels something out. But in this case, it doesn't. And so we would be done. We would be done right here. You could write it like this if you wanted to. I'm not mm -hmm. going to make a big deal about that. But we do need to check, though. And I, you know, in fact, I would go ahead and say at this point, Let's just factor everything down completely, just because it's real easy to kind of look at that and go, no, nah, it doesn't factor anymore. And then you realize, oh, wait, it might have, you know, so I'm just going to say it's probably good at this point to go ahead and factor everything down completely. And then we can finally see like, yeah, no, it almost cancels. Like if this worked out to be an eight right here, then we would have pulled out the two and we would have Y minus four which would have canceled that y minus four, but in this case, it didn't. And so it'd be done right there. Um, okay, I wanna do one last thing and then we will be done for today. Can I go ahead and erase this stuff? Yeah. All right. Okay, we did the hard one, we did that one, and now, Let's do that one. That's also hard. Okay, so this looks terrible, and but we're gonna make it less terrible. Okay, so number 34. And this is on 254, page 254, number 34. It says, one plus four, five times plus three, three one. All right, it says to perform the indicated operation and simplify. As it's written, this does not, I honestly have no idea what to do. This doesn't make sense to me. So what I'm gonna do is say, well, hold up, negative exponents. What does a negative exponent mean? <laughs> I think about it as a negative exponent says, you take whatever this thing is and you take it to the opposite si side of the divide sign. 
right? Mm -hmm. And so there's there, there's always a divide sign. It's always divided by one. And so this means take me down into the denominator and make my power positive. So that's going to be my first step here. And especially since like what this this whole section is about fractions and polynomials, well, that would probably be a good place to start. So I'm going to start like that and say, OK, that thing means that thing right there. What is this? Tell me what to write. Uh, 4 over x plus 3. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and keep them in parentheses because that'll be nice. In fact, let's go ahead and give myself some space here. I'm going to redo this. So we said five, because I know what's about to happen. You said plus, and you said four, and then you said x plus three is in the denominator. Okay, what about this last one? Um, minus two over x plus three uh, times x plus three. Yeah, and we can write it like that. Uh, we can write x3 it. squared. Yeah, I mean, any either way, you know, whatever, doesn't matter. Now when I'm looking at this, I'm going to play that same game of, oh, wait a minute, we need a common denominator. And this guy is deficient. There's an x minus three term, but I could see that, well, altogether, at the worst, we're going to need two of these guys, right? Mm -hmm. And so let's go ahead and get both of them over here, right? Because I'm just kind of taking a survey of everything. It's like, okay, we have one x minus three. We have one x plus three. Oh, we have another x plus three. And so looks like I'm going to need two of these over here. Let's do it. X plus three quantity squared, which means I need what in the numerator? X plus three squared. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about this guy? What's he missing out on? An X plus three. And what else? An X minus three. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And he needs an x minus three. Your book says to identify the least common denominator first. And again, I don't think about it that way. Like this turns out to be the least common denominator that you're going to get. But I don't approach it that way. I haven't taught it that way because I just keep thinking like, okay, this is not the same as either of these things. And I know that I'm going to need something common. And since that guy was missing, or at least one of those, it looks like, oh, two of those, then that's what I need to put there. And then with this guy, it's like, well, and so I'm, I'm taking the entire thing into account here when I do that. But, okay, so what do I need to write in the numerator for this one? Um, an X plus three and an X minus three. Uh, and honestly, if I were doing this one, I the way I would always do is as I write that, I would put that one in the top. As I write that one, then I'm going to put that one in the top, right, right behind each other, so that I don't forget to do that. Okay, what's this guy missing? An x minus three. X minus three x minus three, and now that needs to go in the top, just like that. Now, okay, I've just taken a step, so I'm going to just verify that I haven't changed anything. Those two cancel out, leaving me with a five over x minus three. That's exactly what that means. That is five over x minus three. Okay, these guys right here, that cancels that, that cancels that, and I'm left with a four over x plus three, that is four over x plus three. So I haven't changed anything. That is exactly the same thing as that. 
This cancels this, the x minus three cancels the x minus three, those are gone. And that means two divided by x plus three squared, which is the same thing as that right there. Do I have a common denominator? Um, yes. Yeah, that's the whole, that's, that's what I was doing, right? That was my whole point, was to keep, keep adding terms to everybody until we have a common denominator. What is that common denominator? How do you want to write it? Um, x plus three in x plus three. And? Um, x minus three. X minus three. Now I do like to have it factored out like this. We could have written it as x plus three squared and then an x minus three, whatever, if we want to do it that way. It's just, I like to see them all written out. If it were x plus three to the seventh, I would not write all of them out. But in this case, I like to see them all written out. Whatever, that's just me. So now, oh boy, this is going to get ugly, but this is, uh, this is math. So five times this right here. What is x plus three squared? <laughs> x plus three times x, x squared minus. Wait, what? Oh, squared. Sorry. Uh -huh. Yeah. X squared. Uh -huh. First. Uh, three x plus three x is six x. There you go. And plus six. Plus six. No. Nine. Plus nine, there we go. Okay. And yeah, first outer and last gives me that right there. Good. Okay, what about this? What does that work out to be? Four times something. And what is that something? X squared. Um, plus minus nine. Minus nine, yep. Right, because the opposite signs, they take care of each other and we don't need to worry about it. Okay, so now it's gonna get tricky because there's a minus right here. So I'm gonna go ahead just kind of in my head say, well, the two and the X gives me a two X. The two and the three gives me a minus six. So then what do I need to write here? Or how? Um, okay, a minus two X yep. plus six. Yes, good. And if you want, like, you could do this in multiple steps if you like, like you could, bracket that and whatever, but you know, this is, this is pretty straightforward to say, well, I would have a, you could think about it as a negative two jumps over and gives me a negative two X, negative two jumps over and gives me a positive six mm -hmm. X and so on and so forth. Okay, I think we're ready now to go ahead and multiply these guys through and then we'll be able to combine and hopefully, hopefully something nice is gonna happen. Let's see, so same denominator has not changed. Denominator. Okay, what do I get when I distribute my five into here? Uh, five x squared plus 30 x plus 45. 45. Okay, now. This guy. Mm, plus 4x squared and whatever 9 times 4 is 36 minus 36. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know my nines. Okay, now what? Minus 2x plus 6. Minus 2x plus 6. Okay, so now <sighs> we're going to get all this stuff together and hopefully we could factor it out and stuff will cancel. But I'm going to go ahead and erase the top. Am I good to erase the top? Yeah. Okay, so I'm erasing the top. Now let's just go ahead and do it. Let's 
write my common denominator, which is an x plus three and an x plus three and an x minus three. I'm going to go ahead and get this down. Okay, uh, let's group all the squared terms together. And what do we get? Um, 9x. 9x squared. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What about okay. all the x terms together? 30 minus 2x is, uh, what is it, 28x? So we have a 20 positive 28x. Yeah. Yes. Now, 45 <clears throat> minus 36 is 9 plus 6 is a uh, 15. All right, let's see. Because the six and the minus 30 plus 15. Yes, I, I buy it. Plus 15. <laughs> now, ooh, ugly. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, we have some options. I want to go ahead and try to factor down that top bit right there. Mm -hmm. I could see that there are a couple of options. Nine could either be what and what or what mm -hmm. and what. Either three times three or nine times one. Okay, which one do you want to try first? Uh, nine times one. Yeah, and you know, and that's the hope, right? Is that maybe, maybe when I do this, like that might come out to be an X plus three or an X minus three, hopefully, we don't know yet. So, but that's what I would try first. And now 15 uh, is what? Five times three or 15 times one. Five times three or 15 times one. So let's do the five and the three first. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, maybe five and three. Let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, outer gives me what? Uh, 27. 20. Nine times three is 27. And then the inner gives me what? Five X. Yeah, that ain't happening. Um, what if we flipped three and five? Outer gives me 45. And then the inner gives me an already 45. Mm -hmm. There's no way we're going to get 28 out of that. Okay, so how about one and 15, I guess? Where do you want to put the one and where do you want to put the 15? Uh, let's just do um, one on the outside and 15 on the inside. Okay. So outside gives me nine, and inside gives me 15x, 24. Four, no, that's not happening. <sighs> Yikes. OK, so it looks like now at this point, right, at this point, since this is the thing that we're doing, I can tell that we, we've exhausted all the options with nine and one. Okay, mm -hmm. And so I would say, well, then, if this does break down, it's got to be 3x and 3x. But now I could see. No, it's not going it to. does, unless. And, and what I would say is then we're done because, mm -hmm. well, it, the 3x isn't going to cancel unless it works out to be something that actually factors out, right? Oh, like right. 3x plus 9. Oh, we could pull out a three and then we'd have an X plus three and something would cancel. So unfortunately we are gonna have to keep plugging along and I'm pretty sure this doesn't actually work out, but mm -hmm. let's just do it because it's good practice. 15, you already told me is 15 times one or three times five. Which would you like to try first? Three times five. Three times five. So let's do, and it doesn't matter which order. That's kind of nice because it's a three and a three, right? like a 3x and a 3x. So we won't need to try <laughs> flipping it around. You can, if you want, go ahead and flip it around, but yeah, it's not gonna help. So the outer gives me what? 15x and 9x. So that doesn't work. Yeah, not happening, okay. So then the only other option we have is a one and a 15. Um. And so um, the outer gives me three times 15 is 45x. Nice, good. I, I, I 
I had no idea. <laughs> and then the inner gives me three X. That so no. not happening, not happening at all. And so I think we're done. Um, this thing is in its reduced form. And so now, unfortunately, that's something you got to check. And especially since you know what the last homework set was like, right? Like that was the whole name of the game is factor this thing down in hopes that something else is going to cancel out. And so we have to try it from now on for the rest of our lives. Anytime you have an mm -hmm. expression like this, you got to try to factor the top in as many ways as you can. There's no way around that. So, okay. Uh, any questions? Any last questions? No. No. Actually. Okay. Good, good, good. So uh, I'm going to assign some homework. Mm -hmm. uh, page 253. 254 and it is sec or chapter six section two okay and we're gonna do number seven through 29 odd do not do number 31. I hate 31. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, How do you really feel about number 31? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, then 33 and 35, which are exactly like the one we just did. It's written in its with the little negative exponents, and it's exactly what you've been doing up until this point. You just rewrite it as fractions and then put it together and try to cancel anything out Daddy. and then i do want to see that one i i want to see number 43 43 is tough there it has composition of functions it says d of d of x they've defined d of x and then it says d of d of x. So, right. yeah. So let's just, just to make sure that we're on the same page with that. Let's say that I had defined an f of x that is equal to, oh, I don't know. How about x squared minus one? Then f of f of x, would be, well, there's a few different ways we could do this, but I would think about it as saying, well, what is f of x? f of x, it tells me right here, f of x is a fancy way of writing this quantity right here. So I would rewrite it by saying, well, then that is equal to that right there. Right, and I could think about it, I even like to think about it in parentheses like this. Then I would say, well, F of smiley face says you take smiley face and square it and then subtract one. So, right, so just like the shape here that I'm looking for is F of something equals whatever that something is squared minus one, just like that, right? Mm -hmm. And so when it says f of that stuff, we take that stuff, square it, and then subtract one. So I would say, okay, you take this stuff and you square it, and then you subtract one. That stuff happens to be x squared minus one. Right. Now, remember, <laughs> this <laughs> is different from right x squared minus one well no oh. yes if, yeah so play with it if if you want you could just brute force this guy um you could also try to factor this thing because this thing in itself is a difference of squares right like if i had anything squared minus oh i don't know nine 
I could say that's the same thing as whatever that thing is, and then plus three and minus three, because I notice there are difference of squares. And this is a difference of squares. And so I could write it that way, or I could brute force it, and I'll end up getting the exact same thing. I could say, mm -hmm. well, that is a difference of squares. And so it's something like this with whatever that is, which in this case happens to be x squared minus one. And then that is a square. And so if it were nine, I think, oh, well, the root of that is three. And so it's plus or minus three. Here it's a one. So it's okay, the root is one. And then it's plus or minus one. And then from there, I could say, oh, that's the same as x squared minus one minus one, or x squared minus two. And this is x squared minus one plus one, or just x squared. Or I could brute force this guy and just say, well, this means that thing times that thing. And I could get, okay, well, that means this times that right there. And then I have the minus one, and so minus one. And then I could just brute force and say, first outer, inner last gives me x to the fourth. Outside is a minus x squared. Inside is a minus x squared for a total of minus two x squared. Minus one, minus one is a plus one. So that's that guy. Finally, minus one. And blah, 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 we would end up with exactly the same thing as this. And what I'm telling you, I'm going into this because either way you want to treat this, you're going to end up at the same place. 